terms that you're a dirty, rotten sinner headed for hell. If it's not for the grace and the of mercy of Jesus Christ on the cross, you'll never seek that. That is something God's got to open your eyes to. Every man wants to justify himself in this world. Every man wants to tell you and me how good they are. They want to profess every man his own goodness, as the scripture says. It is the wonderful grace of God, the shepherd coming to the sheep when your eyes open and you realize that it is just a spider web, as Jonathan Edwards preached, that keeps you out of hell. It is just a spider web break from what you are to hell, and you deserve it. When the gospel began making sense to you and you knew that you needed Christ, that was the call, God calling you to salvation. He found you, in verse number 6, yet without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. In due time. We come to Christmas time and we love that. Oh, it's so stressful, isn't it? You know, you have something going on every day of December, every little day. And you're trying to look how to get wrapping paper, how to figure out even when to get to Walmart. And you have this breakfast and this, you know, this got to be sent out in the mail. And we got to decorate the tree and get the tree and all that kind of things. You know, oh, I'm, I think I'm just going to decorate the telephone pole this year. It's just so stressful. Okay, listen. We look at that and we love cantatas and we love musical programs and we love to see nativities and things like that. But do you realize what an incredible prophecy specific timing that God had to send Jesus Christ to Bethlehem to be born of a virgin in the Christmas story. It was in due time. What time? Due time. I could give you probably a hundred things of why it was incredible timing. I'll give you one of them. Jesus had to come when Romans were under the, the occupation of all that territory so that he could die the way that Romans crucify on a cross and not die by stoning, or not by, die by being hanged, or something like that. Perfect timing. In due time, Christ came. It's the wonderful pinnacle event, the greatest thing that ever happened in the world, the greatest, the hugest thing that Jesus Christ, God the Son, gave himself as a martyr for your sins. It's the biggest thing that ever happened. It was in the perfect timing. Christ came from heaven and provided the tool of salvation. His own perfect life. He lived for 32, 33 years. Perfect and that perfect sacrifice replaced your sinfulness. And he took hell on the cross for you so that you could get his righteousness. God will swap you if you'll believe in Christ alone and stop trying to trust in your goodness. Consider what strange love this is. The righteous martyrs himself for the unrighteous. The righteous one. Look at verse number 8. Here's the love thing. But God, now I want to read, I want to back up here. Read verse 6. Or seven as it goes into it. For when we were yet without strength in due time, or just at the right time of history, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die or martyr himself. Yet maybe for a good man, or peradventure for a, a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, in contrast to that kind of martyrdom, commendeth or he showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Consider how strange a love this is. There are some cases in history where a person died in place of someone that they loved or respected. Would you like to hear a story? Good, because I want to give one. This is the story of Miss Antonio Neri. It's in the New York Times, August 27, 1909. The headline reads, Dies to Save Husband. Wife of Taylor jumps in front of him when angry customer shoots. Angered, now this is a bit graphic. It's 1909. They just said it the way it was. All right? In 1909, they say, you're probably just going to just starve to death. You know, they just laid it out there. You know, whatever. It was straight stuff. Angered by his, because his tailor threatened to sell the suit of clothes he had ordered, Frank Zara, 20 years old, of 38 Bergen Street, Newark, New Jersey, Newark, shot Miss Antonio Neri on Wednesday night as she threw herself in front of her husband in their little tailoring shop at 401 Central Avenue, Newark. She died a short time afterward at the, at the city hospital, the bu bullet having entered her right eye and pierced the brain. She was 31 years old and the mother of two young children. Zara was captured, this guy, by two 19-year-old youths, Samuel, blah, blah, blah. They pursued him several miles, tripped him, pinned him to the ground, holding him there, blah, 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 neighbors, blah, 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 the last 
police arrived. Later, Zara confessed, said the police. Zara ordered a suit of clothes several weeks ago, paying $5 deposit. He failed to call for the clothes, and Neri notified him that the clothes would be sold unless they were paid for. Zara called on the tailor on Wednesday, and after an angry interview, started to leave. And, a and as he left the place, he turned, drawing a revolver. Mrs. Neri, Neri saw the move and jumped in front of her husband, receiving the bullet. That is a good wife, Rob. That is amazing love, isn't it? Is that not great marital love? It's tremendous love. She throws herself in front of the bullet, dies in his place, makes the news. Friends, that's a tremendous story of love. But it's not what Christ did for you. Do you know why it's not? What love that lady had for her husband caused her to jump in front of the bullet. However, in verse number 7 and 8, that is not the responsive love that Christ jumped in front of the bullet for you like. Christ dying in your place is totally the opposite of the story. He died for you when you were his enemy, when you were his sinner without strength or will to come to God. He died for a world full of enemies, disobedient humanity that are running away from God. His law, his righteousness. I do not state the case of man's wickedness, of my wickedness, too lightly. No, if, if you think I do, you do not believe the scriptures of how desperate every man and woman in this room is without Jesus Christ and in this world is without Jesus Christ. We are totally depraved, self-serving, enemies of Almighty God with no power or no strength to come to him. But then in our weakness came the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ, the Savior, swooped down. In verse number 8, look, but God commendeth, that is, he shows or displays or exhibits what kind of love he has. It's not the love of Mrs. Neri, who jumps in front of the bullet responsively because she loved her husband so much. It is the love of one who dies for an enemy. Now that's love. What kind of love is that? It's grace love. What kind of love sees Toby Whitmer in the year of 1970 born and knew that I would violate command after command and command after command of Scripture. And God Almighty is a just judge. He doesn't wink at it as some kind of grandpa with long whiskers. He is the just judge that makes everything right. And knowing that Toby Whitmer would violate him thousands upon millions of times, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for the enemy, for me, the enemy. What kind of love is that? It's not Mrs. Ziri love that is responsive. It is a God who sees nothing good in us and yet gives himself anyhow. That is love. He left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny. T'was the lonely hill of Golgotha, there to lay down his life for me. It's the old song, if that isn't love. Now let that impact you. Let you realize what grace love is. In our weakness came the news of the gospel. This is the love not of a woman throwing herself in front of a bullet to save her dear husband, but a savior throwing himself on a cross to save a disobedient, self-consumed enemy. Those that have arrogantly broken, repeated his commandments, repeatedly broken them day after day, and we will break them today. And it's not okay with God. He has got to justly deal with our sin. And he dealt with it on the cross. If you will have faith on that alone. If you will come to Jesus. Listen, no one loves like that. No one does stuff like this. You would not do this for an enemy. No one dies to spare an enemy. What kind of love is that? What kind of self-sacrificing love dies for those who deserve hell? What kind of love does that? I've never had anyone love me that way. Amy and I love each other greatly more than anyone else we love on the whole earth. But the love is responsive love. The love is that I see things in her that I love, and she sees things in me that she loves. It's a responsive love. God's love for those that he died for is not responsive. He died for the world of enemies, all the world of enemies, and that includes you. 
what kind of self-sacrifice